Okay, let's convert some files from Universe Sandbox 2 to Space Engine. Uh, I assume you've already downloaded uh, the, the converter that I wrote. Uh, if you haven't, a link will be in the, in the description. But basically, it's super simple. This is real easy. There's hardly anything to it. So let's get started. Uh, I'll pretty much just kind of walk you through the steps and show you how to do it. So the first thing you're going to need is a simulation file. Um, I'm sure you already have Universe Sandbox. Uh, so, of course, you can create your own simulations. Uh, you'll need the simulation file of the simulation that you want to convert, and I'll show you how to get to that. So you actually want to go to Open and go to My Sims, and you want to go to Open Simulation folder here. Uh, these UBox files hold uh, the simulations uh, that you create or that you save. Uh, so these are going to be what you use. Uh, actually, it, it's pretty much just a folder. Uh, you can open it with 7-zip or WinRAR or whatever it is that you use. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. So, uh, I'm going to be using a simulation file off of the Steam Workshop. It's called The Actual Solar System by uh, Super Swagga. So, shout out to Super Swagga for making this. It's, it's all the planets, all of the, uh, all of the moons and everything. So, super, it's, it's a very large file, and I've been using it a lot for testing. But, but uh, it actually has 4,391 objects in it. So, it's very big, but I'll kind of show you how fast it takes to convert all of those uh, objects over. So you're going to open uh, this file, or whichever file it is that uh, you have named in here, and you're going to find the simulation.json file right here. Now, I've actually already put it in here, but you're going to copy and paste it into the input folder. I've already put it in here because I've made some edits. Because uh, these, are, these have the names of everything in the solar system, I just put an A here so there wouldn't be, so Space Engine wouldn't uh, conflict with anything. So here so you can exit out of this once you've copied over this you don't want to you don't want to move it you want to copy and paste it and then you can kind of get rid of this stuff so now that it's in your input folder the only thing that you have to do is double click uh, this this uh, exe file and that will that will put two files in here and those will be what you use later so uh, this black console window is going to appear uh, it Usually, for very, very small files, it'll hardly take any time at all. But like I said, this one has over 4,000 objects in it. So it took a couple of seconds. So it's super quick, uh, you know, super easy to use. So that's going to give you two files, and it's going to be the name of the system plus the word star, and then the name of the system plus the word planet. And both of these files are going to look something like this. So the, the star one is going to be just a berry center so that Space Engine kind of has a, a, an object to work with. Uh, and that, that one's, it can be pretty useful, or is useful, if you want to actually get this to appear in Space Engine. And, uh, and this file actually holds all of the data. So, you know, every star, every planet, every moon, um, it had, they all have orbits, although I'll get into that a little bit later, uh, because sometimes, you know, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect system. But uh, it works. It works well enough. It's a good starting point for you to, uh, you know, change a couple of things yourself. So once you have those two files, you're going to go back to Steam and find Space Engine. You're going to want to add those two files into your Add-ons folder. So of course, you know, Properties, Browse Local Files. That's going to give you Add-ons here. Add-ons, Catalogs, and then you've got your Star and Planets folder. So from here, you want to take both of these files and you want to put them in the correct place. So the so you're going to take the star file, put it in the star folder. Uh, I'm just going to replace that. And the planet file, because I've already done some te testing, uh, so there's already one in there. But you're going to, So the, the star file in the, st in the star folder, the planet file in the planet folder. And from there, that's all you have to do. You can launch Space Engine, and we should be able to find it in Space Engine, and it should be completely converted. Okay, so I've loaded up Space Engine, and we can actually go find these objects now that they're in the add-ons folder. Actually, I'm already here, but what you would do is you, you would take a, a look at the search option, and, and the name of the system is A, the actual solar system, right? So you would go to, and it'll take you straight to it, and as you can see, uh, planets, uh, dwarf planets, and, and all the moons as well, uh, all converted over. Uh, to some degree of accuracy, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but we can go... We can go down. This is just a, like I said, this is a copy of everything in the solar system because this is what was in Universe Sandbox. So, yeah, we can take a look at all of these objects and you can see um, all of their moons and dwarf moons and everything uh, copied over.
This is what it looked like in Universe Sandbox at the time that we exported the file, the simulation file. And uh, this is what it gives us. Obviously, uh, it's a little bit different than the actual solar system. You can see there's like 20 dwarf moons here, right? I mean, I'm sorry, dwarf planets. Uh, that's because there's no difference between uh, dwarf planets and regular objects in the simulation file. They're all just uh, objects. So I have to sort those out myself, and uh, the sorting that I that I used isn't perfect. But it, you know, it, it's fine. It doesn't doesn't bother me at all. But yeah, this is this is pretty much what you you'll get. This also relatively works with uh, multiple star systems, and 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 for the general case, it should work fine. But let's talk a little bit about uh, binary systems because, and this is a big uh, this is a big disclaimer because binary systems in this program do not work. So binary systems don't work because uh, the orbital elements just aren't calculated correctly. I, I don't know if this is a problem with my code or if it's a problem uh, with binary systems just being too complex to uh, to calculate with just one instance of, of information. I, I'm not sure. But the problem is that uh, binary systems don't, they don't work. Not completely. Now let me tell you what does work. And let's go find uh, the Earth. A earth and I'll kind of show you what I mean because this is going to be because it, it'll print out uh, your berry center right because so it does create the berry center and it does create both of the objects and that works fine but there's some there's a problem with the way that that it actually calculates the actual orbit so uh, you can see the berry center's orbit is relatively uh, fine you know it's a, a period of about one year a major axis of about one AU right and, and like I said this is just an instance of information so of course, these numbers are never going to be perfect, uh, but they should be relatively accurate. But something kind of weird gets down here when we go to Earth. Uh, the semi-major axis is fine, uh, or at least kind of uh, accurate, but the eccentricity is absolutely ridiculous. In fact, uh, most of these numbers are borderline useless. You, you can't use them. So when you create uh, binary objects, if you have them in Universe uh, Simulator, I'm sorry, Universe Sandbox, you will have to open this file and edit their information uh, manually. So the semi-major axis is usually relatively accurate. But I would suggest, you know, actually getting that information from Universe Sandbox and and, and editing these values and, uh, and basically copying and pasting them. Because, of course, their orbit has to be the same. Uh, as long as you subtract or add 180 to the argument of pericenter, um, their orbits are supposed to be exactly the same. So, yeah, or binary orbit orbits don't work, but everything else should be relatively accurate. Um, like I said, semi-major axis works pretty okay, but all of the un other information, useless. Uh, but that's about it. That's pretty much how you use it. it it's super simple. Um, yeah, the only thing you have to do is put it in the input file, double click, and you're good to go. Uh, you might have to edit a couple values yourself for like binary orbits, but the point of the the point of the program is really just to cut down the amount of time it takes to do all of this information manually. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.